On the AQA unit one paper, your third question is going to be the uh, 12 mark diagram question. Remember, there's more. There's always going to be more than one way to obtain a full mark allocation. So if you take a look at the mark scheme, there's going to be two marks on offer for um, including relevant definitions. Generally, a good rule of thumb, for question one, your definition question, you can obtain two marks for including relevant diagrams. And similarly here, on your diagram question, you can obtain two marks for including relevant definitions. Okay? And depending on the paper, you might also be able to obtain a further two marks for including examples for these definitions. Okay, so two marks, maximum of two marks for definitions, maximum of two marks for examples. Uh, there's going to be four marks for including a fully labelled diagram, and we'll see exactly what that means just after the jump. And then lastly, your written explanation. Uh, so describing what's happening in the diagram, there's going to be a maximum of either eight or ten marks um, available for this, depending on the question. Okay, so we're just going to flesh this out a little bit by taking a look at um, June 2013, context number one, question number three. It says, with the help of an appropriate diagram, explain the view of education as a service which markets tend to under-provide. Um, so my general strategy approaching these uh, diagram type questions is include your definitions first. Now here it's very easy to see what you're going to define. It's a question on positive externalities and, and merit good. So you're going to define both of those. Um, so give your definition of positive externalities and then remember to include your example. So your example here could be e.g. Um, for, for positive externalities, e.g. the economic benefits of reduced NHS costs, the result from the consumption of healthcare, or alternatively, you could talk about um, transport or environmentally friendly measures. Um, generally speaking, the, the type of um, the type of good, the type of theme that pops up when, when you're talking about merit goods or um, positive externalities. Um, second definition, you get to define merit goods and then give examples. Again, you could just put e.g. education or healthcare. So um, the examples you talk about when you're talking about merit goods are the same examples um, as the examples you talk about when you're talking about externalities. So just make sure you're choosing different ones um, for, for, for each definition. Um, next, moving on. So it, sh it should be relatively straightforward to pick up um, all four marks for definitions and examples for this question. Uh, but moving on, your, your diagram, make sure this is fully labelled. Uh, what I mean by this is um, you need to make sure your axes are labelled properly, so either P and Q or quantity and then costs and benefits, um, depending on the question. Make sure your equilibrium points are marked on, so your P1, your P, your Q1 and your Q, or alternatively if you're using P1, P2, Q1, Q2, that's equally valid. Um, and then make sure your, your curves are correct. I suppose that's um, the hardest part of the question. It shows whether you actually understand the question or not. So in this case, um, we're looking at positive externalities. So there's a, a number of different ways you can represent positive externalities um, diagram. What I would go for is something that looks like this, your... Um, marginal social benefit, marginal private benefit curve. I mean, you can also just label these D and D1, but just so, just as long as you're making sure that you um, clearly clearly differentiate between the two in your written definition and say that D1 is the case where um, external benefits are included. In other words, D1 is your marginal social benefit curve, um, whereas D is just your marginal private benefit curve. This doesn't take into account your external benefits, only takes into account um, private benefits. Okay, I'm not going to labour too much on the differences between um, the different different externalities diagrams. I'll probably cover that in another video. Um, so, okay, four marks. So, assuming that you've picked up four marks for your um, definitions and your um, relevant examples, picked up four marks for your diagram, um, you've got another four marks to pick up. Okay, and this comes from your written explanation, developing a, what's called a chain of reasoning. Um, and each link in your chain of reasoning gets you two additional marks. Right, so for the first um, first link in your chain of reasoning, I would always I would always um, explain what the difference is between your two curves and, and what's causing the, the shift in your curves. Okay, so your your twelve mark diagram question it will always involve either. Uh, two demand curves and one supply curve, or perhaps a marginal private benefit curve, marginal social benefit curve, and then just 
one marginal social cost curve, um, but it will, always in, it will always involve three curves in total. So basically you want to um, you want to explain why it is that your two demand curves differ or your marginal private benefit curve differs from your marginal social benefit curve. Okay, so that's going to be your first uh, mark in your chain of reasoning. Um, second of all, you, you want to ex explain what happens in terms of your equilibrium values. So here we have the fact that marginal social benefit is greater than marginal private benefit. And as a result of that, um, we have Q, which is our um, equilibrium um, quantity if left to the market, whereas Q1 is your equilibrium value, that's your socially optimal equilibrium value. Um, so that would pick you up another two marks, and then you would get another two marks by saying that, therefore, um, merit goods such as education are um, underconsumed if left to um, the market mechanism, underconsumed Q1 to Q2. Okay, so just to recap your key points here, um, start off with your definitions, include relevant examples. Remember, there's no mark, negative marking on this paper, so um, even if they're not awarding you marks for, for examples, they're not going to take marks away from you. And one thing I, I forgot to mention in the, in the last part of the video, if you're struggling to see what to define, um, just define demand and define supply. Okay, so, so there'll be two marks available on, on offer for that. Um, next point, Remember, um, a fully labelled diagram means equilibrium values labelled, um, axes fully labelled, and um, a correct shift shown um, in terms of your curves. And then final point to make is, um, yeah, just, just a general point on exam strategy. So if you've picked up um, the eight marks available for your diagram, for your examples, and for your definitions, it makes it a lot simpler when it comes to your written definition. It's very, it's very, very easy, sorry, your, your, your written explanation. It's very easy to miss out um, links in your chain of reasoning here. Um, but if you only need um, two links out of a potential four or five, I think it's very easy to obtain four marks in this question. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more tutoring videos. Remember that full notes and other resources are available on my tutoring website at idktuition.com. And if you'd like me to cover anything in particular, please leave me a message in the comments below or on Twitter at TomDavies32.